has a certain amount of some capability. The Juicy Tears hit Las Vegas to see Michael Lazzari. <laughs> it's good to be with you. Yes, what a stir you're causing in the city. <laughs> and you, all about you, you're challenging everybody. Oh, you're a lot yeah. of attraction uh, messages. It's crazy. I know, everything from the book signings to interviews to the, 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 the seminar itself. And people curious about what's going on. And... It's just amazing the people that are showing up and hearing about the subject and some of them are fans that are coming to the seminar with their book and their book signing and with tags and stickies and book. pins and buttons and you know it's it's really one of the books that you have to read over and over, not have to read but people like to read it over and over and over again and it's quite flattering when they bring it to a bookstore and it looks like it's been tied to the back of a truck somewhere I mean uh, it's so well worn so that's flattering to me for sure. Well I'm definitely grateful for your uh, teaching because Thank we've you. done many sessions many coaches sessions before yes. the juicy tour started and has really helped me to raise my vibration mm -hmm. and you're explaining that it is important to raise our vibration yes because this way we attract better and more and more mm -hmm. aligned with with ourselves and it feels good yes. and it's exciting and yes. we're here right now I feel very abundant especially being today on the juicy tour in Las Vegas because of you have um, sponsored the tour we're literally here for five days because of you. Yes. We're here in this amazing, it was supposed to be a, a bedroom, a, a hotel room, and yes. it turned out into a whole three, four flats. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, we were at the front desk, and I was checking Lilo when we were in the lineup, and, and uh, the receptionist said, leaned forward and said, uh, Mr. Lange, we're going to upgrade your friend's place because... Whatever. I didn't know what the reason was. We didn't care what the reason was. And, and we were like crossing in the lineup. It's like, oh, you got an upgrade to like an apartment unit from a hotel room. So yeah. that's, how, that's how our life works. That's how your life and works. When you're talking about raising vibration, and yeah. you know, if you can think of it being on a dial, like a radio dial, raising it means putting it high on the dial. So sometimes we can call it high vibrations or fast vibrations or feel, really feeling good vibrations. They all mean the same thing. Mm. And that's what law of attraction is responding to. So really, uh, I mean, that's a good observation. Uh, our natural place is to have this high vibration. So what we really need to do is remove all the things that are causing us to lower the vibration. You know, things that make us lower the dial. We go to the dial and lower it when we think about negative stuff or around negative things or eating something we don't like or smelling something we don't like. All of those things lower the dial of our vibrational meter. Mm. So you and I have learned we know how to lock the dial in because we are very, I'm going to use the word selfish, which means self-care. We care about ourselves enough not to lower our dial. And a lower dial has negative resistance or negative vibration. And you can't attract anything if the resistance is at the door stopping it from coming in. So mm -hmm. it's fun. Because our natural work. state is abundant, isn't it? It is. It's pure joy and abundance. And as we grow up and have beliefs and ideas and experiences, they get layers and layers of cloud. And, and, uh, and then, uh, you know, as, as adults, we are we're born in this pure positive energy. And as we grow up, we, we smother it with negativity. And then we get an hour age. And now we're doing personal development to unravel the negative stuff so we can surface this joy that's so natural to us already. Mm. Yes. So what are some of the things that are on the way? What are that are on our wake? How can we remove that resistance and be yes. more in tune and raise our vibration? Yes. Are there some techniques? Well, again, the, our, our natural state is to be in a high vibration. So we need to say, what is it that's causing me to lower the dial? And we all know when we're lowering the dial by how we feel. So if you pick, if your, your phone rings and you look at the call display and it's somebody that and will say, oh, that person brings me down, what we really mean is that person makes me lower my vibration, but mm -hmm. they don't make us do anything. We're the ones that choose to lower our dial to match theirs. So, you know, it's around negative people and negative events. So we need to take a look at all the areas of our life and say, what things are causing me to lower the dial from my natural high place to the low place? And then we need to take accountability and say, you know what, I've had enough of that. <laughs> Sometimes people might be familiar with the expression when they get really ticked off or angry and they say, that's enough of that. From now on, I'm never having that. And th that's good because that means that contrast they're experiencing, that, that ugliness, they're birthing the clarity. So whenever you said, that's enough of that, I'm not putting up with that again. From now on, I'm doing it this way. I love when I hear that because that is the birthing of clarity. And that's, that's when you tell yourself, no more holding down my positive vibe. That's enough enough of that. Mm. So if you caught yourself saying that, that meant you were selfish enough to say, 
I'm going to look after myself so much so that I'm going to make sure nothing comes to my life. And if it does come to my life and it's negative, well, I'm going to birth it really quickly and say, oh, what do I want from this? Or what, what, what do I want better? Or how do I want? So what do I want when you're experiencing these negative things? Yeah, I love that question. That was that really made such a shift when I started applying instead of saying what I don't want. Yes. You know, what actually do I want when yes. I, I hear your voice now? Yes. Well, after <laughs> seminar, I had so many people come up that have read my book and hadn't really heard my voice before. And and you could see people smile when I would say stuff like, well, you know, right now and right now and right now. And they're smiling because they've read that before. When I talk about the reset button or to go from what you don't want to what you do want and say, so what do I want? And, and people say, you know, a lot of people tell people to be positive. They say, well, you better be positive. But they don't tell them how. It's mm -hmm. like telling you to do something doesn't tell you how to do it. And uh, as you learned at the seminar, the best way to get the rid of negative thoughts, because negative thoughts are always things about what you don't want. If I'm complaining, it's something I don't like. And if I'm worrying, it's something I don't like. And if, it, In other words, so what do you want? So when you catch yourself having that negative vibration, that's how you reset. Where is our reset button here? Mm, that, we have one. Yeah, ah! we have one. So reset, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> so we have the ability to reset the vibration by resetting our thoughts and our words. And when we reset the vibration, the results get changed. Matter of fact, the only way to have a different result is to have a different vibration. Mm -hmm. So we, first we have to go to our results in our life, whether it's money or, or love or romance or uh, customers or clients or neighbors or mothers and fathers and children, boys and whatever it is, what area is causing you to lower your dial? I know that you know that I know everybody has at least one. Say yeah. yes or no? Yes. <laughs> so we all have at least one area. Go to that area that's the lowest vibration because it's contaminating the overall vibration. Because when people learn about law of attraction and read my book, they say, well, I don't know where to get started. And sometimes they'll want to goose up or make better an area that's already good, yeah. which is okay. I say find the area that has the lowest vibration, and you'll know which one that is by how you feel, and use law of attraction on that to raise its vibration higher, and then your overall vibration is more in balance and it's more better. Mm. So again, find the lowest vibration and then say, so what do I want in this area and change the vibration there? Tell us about your personal life, how it works every day, and how, uh, how it works or some um, some stories. Well, that's a good question, you know, because um, it's quite impressive, you know. You, you mean you teach this every day, so I guess yeah. you're raising your vibration, you're reminding yourself because everybody needs, even you, Mr. Yes. Law of Attraction. Yes. Well, I don't do a daily ritual exercise, but I'm very consistent, you know. Um, I use the word selfish, and again, part of my background is NLP, it stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, and the linguistic part is that I like to reframe words and have mm -hmm. different meanings to it. So sometimes when I say that I'm selfish, people think that's a bad thing, but I'm going to slice and dice it, and selfish really means self-care. So I care about myself that I want to feel good. I don't, I don't eat things that don't taste good, I don't smell things that don't smell good, I don't wear clothes that don't feel good, I don't hang around with people that, and that's all conscious choice. Yeah. And just a reminder that law of attraction is already existing. Mm -hmm. And I kind of call that non-deliberate attraction. I mean, I'm attracting stuff and I'm not even doing anything on purpose. It's just picking up and picking up. Mm -hmm. But deliberate attraction means I have to do something deliberate to attract stuff. So if I'm deliberate about what I eat and what I smell and what I wear and who I hang around with and the conversations I have and the kind of, if I'm very deliberate about just wanting the ones that make me feel good, that makes me a deliberate attractor. Mm -hmm. Again, law of attraction is already existing, and if I want to use it deliberately, then I need to be doing something deliberate. Mm -hmm. And the deliberateness is choosing everything consciously by using my vibrational meter reader. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's my feelings. It's, you know, I do something, goes, e -e -e, no, don't do that. And people ignore that, and some people call it their intuition, or their gut feeling, or their vibration. It means all the same thing. But I've noticed you, you know, uh, at the hotel when you were when we were in line and waiting for yes. in line you also have a certain language and a certain way of being or you use your words a lot to attract also things I mean mm. even if you're not speaking directly to this lady we're still yeah. having a pretty abundant conversation yes. there and people pick on that so yes. there, I guess there's a role of the NLP also or or the language and the verbiage that we use yes. is playing a big role in your success and yes I owe a lot to NLP neuro linguistic programming mm -hmm. and being very deliberate about the words that I use. There's a few techniques in NLP that I like. One of them is called future pacing. It means I'm going to pace the experience into the future in a positive way. In other words, I could say to you, well, I see you being really successful on the tour. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm stalling that idea. I'm pacing you into the future and it feels good, right? Yeah, it does. As opposed to saying, <laughs> well, 
<laughs> yeah, as opposed to say, wow, you must be tired, it must mm -hmm. be a real struggle, and now I'm installing that idea. Yeah. And sometimes people say, oh, you won't like the third, the third night of that seminar, or, and, and now they're pacing people into that experience, so mm. I'm deliberately future pacing in a positive experience. The other thing that I do on a daily basis, I like to precede. Mm -hmm. That's S E E D. So if I'm going somewhere, because some, uh, I'm going somewhere, I know the thoughts and the words that I'm using are, are like a vibrational request. It's it's like going to the internet and typing it in. So if I'm going to a meeting, I said, so here's what I'd like to have happen. I'd like for everything to unfold nice and easily. I'd like us to to have the right perfect questions at the right time and I'd like to be inspired and uplifted and I'd like to find out how I can serve that person and how they can serve me in a really good way and I want the meeting to be efficient and quick and we both leave and we hug each other and we had a great meeting and, and that's and even when I go to the grocery store I want to find the right perfect thing easily and quickly and find the right lineup and mm. you know it's just little stories that I tell mm -hmm. we're already having stories in our head mm -hmm. we're already talking to ourselves so why not install the idea of the way you want it to be mm -hmm. through this future pace and you know, um, uh, preceding some good ideas. So it's literally brainwashing ourselves, but with things, not with affirmations, yes. as you say, because sometimes a positive affirmation can bring a negative feeling, yes. but it's really empowering ourselves and creating yes. a future that empowers us. Yeah, well, I'll, you know, at the seminar, you heard me use the word brainwashing, uh -huh. and, and I'm talking to everybody and telling them how I'm promising them <laughs> that I will change their vibration permanently in that day, and I did it. They got permanent, their vibration was permanently altered. And I said, I'm here to brainwash you. And then I said, I'm here to wash your brain mm -hmm. of the things that don't serve you. Would that be okay? And everybody says, yes. Because mm -hmm. we all know there's things in our brain that need to be washed out. Mm -hmm. And that's the use of the word don't, not, and no. And that's worrying. And that's complaining. And that's spending lots and lots of time about talking about what we don't want. It's okay to have those negative emotions. It's okay to be sad and lonely and, uh, you know, with relationships and death. And you, you, those feelings are okay, but we want to have them briefer. Mm -hmm. And then in the briefness of it, the law of attraction doesn't have time to really absorb that vibration and unfold it into a manifestation. Mm. And that yeah. burst, that's the contrast you're talking about. Yes. When you really like the work from Abraham Hicks. Yes. Yeah, that's that a, helps us to gain clarity. Yes. It? I mean, they, they introduced, you know, when I learned about law of attraction, I understood about being positive and attracting positive of things even when I was young I didn't have a lot of friends I was very sensitive around negative things even around my brother and sisters and f other friends like I didn't like to be teased and I would hide almost so stay away from negative things or if somebody was fighting on TV so I knew I was sensitive about that I also understood there was a relationship between how I felt and what I attracted in the positive way I said wow I'm, I attract positive things because I'm positive but I never ever understood why a positive person could attract negative things mm -hmm. and and it never made sense to me. And I thought I, I thought I got under law of attraction. I thought I understood it until somebody says, well, what about negative stuff? And then I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to explain that. And Abraham Hicksworth, they used the word contrast. And to explain the contrast is anything that doesn't feel good. And law of attraction matches that too. And I think that's the big aha for everybody is that law of attraction matches whether it's a negative vibe or positive vibe. And in the seminar, I talk about, well, law of attraction you know, respectfully isn't very smart, but it's very obedient. It doesn't have a brain and it doesn't have a conscience and it, it doesn't say, oh, Lena's sending this negative vibration. I don't think we'll match it because she's really nice. Well, first, it doesn't have a voice. <laughs> it doesn't know who Lilu is. Mm -hmm. It's just matching vibrations. Mm. Uh, it's not responding to what you read or what you write or who you're hanging around with. It's responding to how you feel about those things. Mm -hmm. So a minute ago you were saying that a positive affirmation can have a negative vibration. I could read something positive and ideally it would cause me to send a positive vibration. Mm -hmm. But for someone that doesn't have any money or any job, if they said, you know, my bank account's overflowing, that's a positive affirmation. Mm -hmm. But when you hear yourself say it, there has to be a little voice says, that's not true. You don't have any money. You have no clients. You know, you're eating rice. You have no money in your whole life. Yeah. And that negative thought generates another negative thought. So the, what the point is, that positive affirmation can send a negative vibration. And you can tell by how you feel whether the words are matching the experience and the feelings. Mm.
Now, this is this is very important information. And you say I'm in the process of. I love yes, that. Yes, I'm in the oh, process of. I'm in the process of attracting a, a, a bus. Yes. And attracting. Yeah. Uh, a well, you know, let's let's do a little test. I want you to do this with your hand so we can show everybody. And I want so this is going to be e e negative vibration, and okay. this is ding 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 positive vibration. <laughs> okay. So I want your vibrational meter to <laughs> make a sound. <laughs> okay. So I want you to say this sentence. We're going to say a positive affirmation. I want, and this is a positive affirmation. I have a juicy living tar bus. <laughs> yeah. so, okay, so that's a positive I feel good sentence. About it, you feel good about it, yeah. but is it true? It's not right now. Not, not right now. So is it true that you have a juicy living tour bus? No. No. So but I feel it's here though. I've, yeah. I've, I've done so much of but this work. I know you're I excited about the idea. I'm excited about the but idea. But there still has to be in your unconscious mind that says, well, I don't have it, but I'm gonna, I want to have it. Yeah. That's what the difference mm -hmm. is. So to re-language that, again, this is the work of NLP, the linguistic part. If I were to say, oh, I'm in the process of unfolding everything I need to do, know I have to have the juicy living tour bus. Mm. And how does that feel? That feels great. Yes. Bing, 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 bing. Yeah, so, okay, good. You can put your vibrational meter. <laughs> so the point is, it's, it's what law of attraction's response to how we feel about what we say. Yeah. So to be able to say, well, I'm in the process of attracting everything I need to do, know, or have. And because you don't know what you need to know, you don't know what you need to do, you don't even know what you need to have. Matter of fact, that's none of your business. Mm. Your job is just to decide and desire that you want to have the juicy living tour bus, set the energy in motion, and let law of attraction unfold and orchestrate it. And as a matter of fact, it might not even be the best solution. I mean, because we've been touring for a few You're months touring now, now, and it's happening without it. it. It's true. I saw you in the rental car with the juicy living tour sticker on it, and I thought. <laughs> It doesn't have to be a bus. Yeah. You're still doing the work. You're still creating change and difference and interviewing people and inspiring people all over the world, and it didn't take a bus. Yeah. Now, the bus would be nice, mm -hmm. and it's still in the process of unfolding and orchestrating. Yeah. I mean, when we first met and had our interview, you were talking about being on the tour. Now you're on it, now you're in it, and I'm with you. I'm here. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look how powerful the thought that you had. Yeah. That started with a thought. Mm -hmm. And that thought got manifested. And now this happened and this happened and this happened. You're attracting all the right perfect people that are in alignment to that. Mm. Sometimes, and the point here is sometimes, it's not the way it, you know, we try to figure out the way it needs exactly. to happen. As opposed to what do you want to have happen? Mm -hmm. Well, if you wanted to inspire people and uplift people mm -hmm. and make people understand that they have the power and control and all those things that you want to get across, you're doing it without yeah. the bus. And sure. the bus would be nice. Say yes. 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 Yes, yes, because there's this abundance, I feel like. There's still another layer. Like with money, we have a lot of things. Like I wish there was more donations. I wish there was more support. You yes. know, I wish there was. So all that, I have to say, I'm in the process of. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm in the process of attracting the ideal people that want to support the ideal tour. And, and, and it doesn't even have to be money. It could be things that are in alignment. I didn't give you money, but... You know, you're staying in a nice hotel in Las Vegas for five days. So, yeah. uh, you know, that's the other thing that we probably should talk about mm -hmm. is that people are always wanting to attract money, mm -hmm. but it's not really money that we want. Mm -hmm. You say, I'd like to attract money to stay in the hotel. And I'm thinking, well, so do you, do you just want to stay in the hotel? It's like, <laughs> well, I need to, you didn't say it, but people say, well, I need to have the money to stay in the hotel. And I said, okay, let's pull money out of the equation. Yeah. What do you really want? Mm -hmm. I'd like to stay in a nice hotel for five days. Okay, good. Set that energy in motion. Mm -hmm. and of attraction will decide how that's going to unfold for you mm -hmm. or for other people. That is such a good yeah. point. Because your vibrational meter reader for most people, as soon as they use the word money, it goes mm, mm, mm -hmm. mm. So take it out of the equation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and, and uh, celebrate the matches too. I really love that. Yes, celebrate That's a big the, one. Yes, celebrate whatever was actually you're actually already attracting, and how much closer you're to your yes. ideal, uh, whatever it is. Yeah. Well, I've got a couple of stories here, or, or a couple of examples. One of them is around goal setting. It was important for you to set a goal to do this. Yeah. But it's also, uh, I mean, that's what that's what goal setting does. It helps launch the idea. Mm -hmm. It sets the energy in motion. It launches the energy for the unfoldment of it, right? But then most people start noticing, they're keeping score, that the goal isn't here yet. Oh, I wanted to have a bus. Imagine if you were still stuck on the bus. Hmm. You'd still be in Chicago and haven't interviewed one people. <laughs> one person rather, but instead you're celebrating all the things that are in alignment to this desire and this vision of yours. Mm -hmm. Some people say they want to have 10 new clients and that's their goal and I say, well when are you going to get excited? And they say, well when I get the 10 new clients and I'm thinking, no, get excited with one client and jump up and down and tell 10 friends and point at all the things that you like about them and in doing so, now you're including that vibration in your own vibration and law of attraction is eavesdropping and unfolds and bringing more than you have two and celebrate the two. 
instead of keeping score where you're not at, we need to learn to keep score of what we have so far. Mm -hmm. And some people say, I've been working on this a year and I'm not there yet. And I said, well, tell me all the things you've done in the last year. And boy, and that really raises people's confidence. It's like, you know what? I've done a lot. I've accomplished this and this and this. So I'm really big on going, let's look back and see what you've done as opposed to looking forward to what you haven't done. Mm. And the celebrating the matches. And then the celebration of it causes you to send the matching vibration of it. Mm. And I love that, that uh, gaining clarity through the contrast because I've done that literally for attracting my ideal life partner. Yes. I mean, I did say that. And what was amazing is that I totally shift my energy around men after doing that. Yes. And I was, I, was, I was helping a friend doing it, like making the whole list. Yes. And, and I felt the vibration like literally sh switch. And I felt like there was other kind of men that existed yes. instead of thinking that men were this and this and that. Yes. And from that moment, I, I, I saw uh, the current boyfriend was not staying around anymore. He yeah. would not feel, you know, he would not want to be around. And then little by little, I started attracting more and more men with an open heart. Yes. And, 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 and more and totally aligned each time. Yeah. And I was celebrating that open heart. And even if the other stuff were maybe not there. Yeah. So that was like, I was like, wow, I'm attracting now men of the heart. Wow, I'm attracting yeah. men of the heart. Well, love attracting doesn't know what boyfriends are. <laughs> You know, the, the <laughs> boyfriend isn't a vibration. They don't know what a boyfriend is. And they don't know what a girl. So you're probably attracting lots of men that are in alignment to what you said you desire in a man. And not that they have to be boyfriends, but it's like, well, I'll ask you, are you? Are you finding you're meeting lots of men that are the way you like to be with mm -hmm. men, like th that have that open heart and so on? Yes. Mm. So you reset the vibration. In every yeah. area, not just, yeah. Yes, and sometimes that's why people meet people that are married or dating because law of attraction doesn't know if you're married or if you're dating. It's if your if your vibration matches somebody that's married. I'm not saying to marry them, but that's what's happening. It's not like oh, I'm attracted. I'm attracted to somebody that already has a boyfriend or girlfriend. Well, then you would celebrate that. Yeah. You wouldn't marry them. You would say, well, am I ever getting close? I mean, I met this guy. He's married, but he's got like 15 out of the 20 things that I like. I love that. What did you like? I like this and this and this. And celebrate all 15 things and include the vibration and write about the 15 things mm. but most people said oh I'm so disappointed about that what a waste of time that is and I hate when this happens well and guess what about it. yeah call 10 <laughs> friends and go to ihatemylife.com and spend 10 hours out there and <laughs> go to dear diary my life sucks and you know and law of attraction is eavesdropping it's yeah. not reading your diary and it's not reading your post on ihatemylife.com <laughs> Which there's no such thing, by the way. So I guess there could be. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't post there. But you understand my point? Yeah. It's like, how long are we going to focus on what we don't want, and what we do want? It's okay to be negative, but do it briefly and quickly, and birth the contrast, uh, yeah. the clarity through the contrast. Yeah, use it instead of using it yes. to, to your disadvantage. Now, what I, uh, what people liked on Saturday when I gave the analogy about the internet. So oh, I yeah. think this will really teach us, uh, yeah. teach our friends about a little bit more about allowing. So let's talk about going to do a search on the internet. I go to Google or I go to Safari. I go somewhere, a search engine, and do I type in what I want or what I don't want? What I want. What I want. Very good. People are good at that. It's a little funny. They call the restaurant, and they, they, I always tell the restaurant what they want. They don't say, okay, here's what I'd like, to, here's what I don't want to order. <laughs> you don't go to the catalog and pick out all the things that you don't want. But most people don't know what they want. They know what they don't want. Yeah. But when we go to the internet, we always type what we want. That's step one. Step one in the three-step formula for law of attraction says, what do you want? There, here's what I want. Press enter. When you press enter, that's step two on the internet. And step two says you need to give it attention, energy, energy and submit the vibration. Like mm -hmm. set, set the energy in motion. So when I put it in the search engine, I press enter. Boy, I did step one. Here's what I want. And I gave the, uh, the attention. I gave the task to um, the internet. It's, we have a vibrational internet. And the words that I'm thinking, and the thoughts, and the clarity that I'm birthing through my clarity and through my desire, that submitted the vibration. It's like, as soon as I talk about it and get excited, that got submitted. Mm -hmm. On the internet, however, when the internet starts to bring you results back from your input, we look at them and we get excited that we're close and thinking, wow, look at this first one. It's not perfect. But it's very, very close. Look, it's got this and this and this. And we're clapping and we're getting all excited about how close we are. Mm -hmm. And then we don't give up. We say, I better tweak the input so I can get more clarity. So we say, oh, what's it missing? So we go back to Google. If we typed in the same, result, uh, same input, we get the same results. We know on the internet, we need to adjust the input a little bit to change the results. Yeah. And then we get really excited, really excited, really excited because how close we're getting. 
But in law of attraction world or in goal setting world, when we start to get results back, we're all, not me, me and you as in we, but most people are complaining that it's not a match. Well, that's not what I wanted. That's nothing like my ideal boyfriend or girlfriend. That's nothing like my ideal client. Uh, two things out of 10, what a waste of time that was. The same rule applies. We need to learn how to look at the results that we're getting and thinking, okay, these results are matching my vibrational input, which is my thoughts and my words. Mm. So if you want to get a different result, you need to go change the vibrational input. Yeah. And then get excited about how close you're getting. And then the excitement, it causes you to send more, vi more of the vibration that's causing you to get more of the, more of the results that you want. Mm. I love what you say too about uh, some people get instant manifestation. What yes. is what makes an instant manifestation? Well, right? you know, this um, th this is such a really good point because people always think that if they desired more, they'd get it faster, or if they prayed more, if they made great big collages, and if they visualized twenty hours a day, is all that's doing is putting input in Google. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. if you keep putting input and getting input and never submit it. You're not going to get anything. It's like ordering from the catalog and never opening the door to receive the order. Yeah. So how fast you'll receive the order uh, on, in the vibrational internet or through the universe, how fast you'll get your desire is determined in how much resistance, which is negative vibration, you have in receiving it. Mm -hmm. So on this hand, I'm very excited and pumped up that I want to have my ideal whatever. And I've, I've told 10 friends and I've prayed and I've made a collage and I've gone to I love my life.com and I put it out there. And so I'm giving myself like a plus 10. And then there's a little voice that says, well, you can't have that. Who do you think you are? Mm. And that's the voice of doubt. Mm -hmm. And doubt's a negative vibration. So the negative vibration of the doubt is canceling the positive vibration of the desire. Mm -hmm. People think if they desired more, it would come faster. Mm -hmm. But the speed at which you'll attract anything is always determined on how much negative doubt you have. And people, if you're, if, if you're hearing this for the first time, think about something that you desired and thinking, you know what, I did want something last year and I doubted it and it never came. So it's always the doubt that slows down the delivery of the manifestation. And then there's instant manifestation where you think about something and somebody calls because you didn't have doubt in receiving it. Or you decided to take a trip to a place that you never knew existed and then you turn on the TV and your vibrational energy matches you up to a show of a country that you never knew existed now you're watching a documentary. That's instant manifestation. Or you picked up somebody's business card in your old purse or pocket or jacket and looked at it and said, I haven't heard from Bob in six months. And now you're giving Bob attention without the negative vibration. And then Bob calls and we always say, this is such a coincidence. I was just thinking about you. But what we really could say is I'm not surprised to have you call because I just set energy in motion about you by looking at your business card. And I didn't have any doubt and resistance that you would call and now you're calling. Mm -hmm. But it's easier to call it a coincidence. Mm -hmm. And we have to top ourselves, you're saying, uh, on our back and not really, you're not so much like thank you, about thanking the universe I noticed or God or something outside, but you're mm. really about well, giving that's, ourselves the credit for yeah, what we well, that's, Yeah, that's a real personal decision and I know it's very sensitive for a lot of people, but mm. in my particular life, and my mm. life's working pretty well the way it is, okay, <laughs> in my life, I, I've created everything for it. There's nothing outside of me that does it to me or for me. Right? And law of attraction didn't make any decisions about what I needed. And it doesn't unfold and know that Michael Logier needs this or needs that. If I get something, it's always matching the vibrational input that I gave it. Now, sometimes I get things bigger and better. Like today, I got a, a Facebook email from a guy that was telling me that uh, he's been reading my book and I've chatted with him. He said, he, and he's from Hollywood, he said, I know lots of famous people that love your book. And that's all he said, lots of famous people that love your book. And that really got me excited. Oh, yeah. And about a month ago, I said, I'd like for someone that has lots of influence. And I, when I did that last time, I had interviewed by Oprah Winfrey four times on a radio show. <laughs> Say yes if you love that. Okay? <laughs> so that, that's what I did when I was, before I got on Oprah's radio show. I said, I'd like to have somebody that has lots of influence, that's credible, and that can help deliver the message to Law of Attraction. So I was interviewed by Oprah four times, and I had my own radio show on Oprah and Friends. And about a month ago, I said, I would like that to have that experience again. You know, my book's been out for seven years, and it's still s selling because there's still people that don't know about Law of Attraction. There's more people that don't know about it than do. Mm -hmm. So there's, this book will be around forever. It is a classic. Mm -hmm. it, it's always going to be entry level for some people, mm -hmm. and it's always going to be the advanced book for other people that are looking for the how-to. Mm -hmm. So when I got that email today, I said, 
that's a result of my input. Because mm -hmm. a month ago I said I'd like to meet somebody that's influential that can help spread the message. Mm -hmm. I also know some other people that have my book, but um, you know, and I always think, wouldn't it be nice if they my book was hanging out of their purse when they were in the paparazzi or something? Yeah, like at the Palms Hotel here. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> hanging out of Britney Spears' purse or something yeah. like that. <laughs> Or Enrique Celine Iglesias. Dion that you're seeing tonight? Yes, I'm seeing Celine Dion in Vegas tonight. That's very That's exciting. exciting. Bringing yeah. friends. You enjoy being uh, uh, generous to and giving, and that's part of raising our... Yes. Well, abundance doesn't always mean um, uh, receiving things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, if it... Here's the really important rule. If it feels good to give it away, then go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. So I like to give things away. You know, I sponsored your tour to Vegas. I've, you know, I've got friends coming in from Victoria that, you know, putting them up in the hotel. We're all going to see Celine. We're all going for dinner. And, you know, and my friends have learned just to say yes to my request. Mm -hmm. And at first they're always like, oh, you're so generous. What can I do in return? And I said, I don't have a lot of friends, friends. I mean, I have about four really dear friends that are my dearest friends ever. And they have learned that being in my life means you need to be a receiver. Mm -hmm. You know, I took my friends to Maui and rented a house and we had a great experience. And when I said, do you want to go to Maui? They said, yes. <laughs> but I've taught them and I want everyone to hear this. Always say yes to money. Mm -hmm. And most people say, no, 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 that's okay. I'll get it. I'll buy my own. But you know, what you're doing is that you're saying, no, I'm not worthy of it or no, I'm not receiving any money. So next time somebody offers you to buy you coffee or lunch or dinner or a hotel, whatever it is, just say yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And my, I've taught my friends, and at first they, they would say, yes, thank you, and I could feel their discomfort, but now they said, I would love to do that with you. And what I'm really doing is that I'm spending energy, which is money, on experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my other friends work during the day, so I'm home during the day, <laughs> and uh, I like to buy, I'm, I'm buying the experience. I'm saying, I'm going to put some money toward this so we can all get together and have an experience. So I can be around my friends more. And it feels good to do it. It's almost like tithing at church. If it feels good to do it, then tithe. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't feel good to do it, then you're sending a negative vibration. Because I hear people say, well, if you, um, uh, you know, if you tithe 10%, you'll get 100 fold back. Well, law of attraction doesn't know what 10% is. And it doesn't know what 100% is. Mm -hmm. So if you add a law of attraction to that equation, if it feels good to exchange something with money, then you'll receive other things. There's no calculator mm -hmm. that law of attraction is, okay, now we can need to multiply that by 100 and do, that's, that doesn't happen with law of attraction. It doesn't know the number. Mm -hmm. It just knows the vibration. So, so max so, out your feeling good. Uh... That's right. If it feels good to make the donation, then make it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I also, you know, one of the things that I've, because um, people have asked me is that I have a policy that I don't lend money to people. I don't lend money to my friends. I don't lend money to people, even though I'm using the word don't. But I will help them attract it. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that. I'll help you attract some money or I'll help you earn some money. And uh, if I do give money to somebody, I give it away. And I don't keep a tab that, oh, I gave this person that or this person that. Because oh, yeah. then that's when the resentment comes up and mm -hmm. you lend somebody money and now you, you look on Facebook and they're in Florida for two weeks. It's like, what's up with that? Mm -hmm. So you really, if you're going to, for me, if I'm going to give people anything, I need you to detach from it and say, you can do what you want with that if it makes you feel good. Or awesome. Well, right. those were yeah. very, very precious points and very important information. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. You are so fun to be with. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Your energy is great to be around yes. you. Thank you. Well, Thank you for, for, for sponsoring the tour to be here. Awesome. Thank you. It's been delicious. And the experience of Vegas can be totally different than what we, you know, think of sometimes. Like just being outside of this strip like that right yes. now, really close by, allows and being in this apartment has been really such a, a resourceful place for us. Yes. Whereas you, you would think, you know, normally Vegas could kind of be draining. Yes. It's amazing how kind of different experience all of it is happening yeah. at the same time. We're all living this reality and totally filtering it out in different ways. Yes. I know if I was on the strip, I would be agitated by the heat and the traffic and trying to cross the street and bumping into people and seeing people drinking and drunk and all like, you know, I, I, yeah. I have a reaction to that, you know, I don't feel safe or so. But because I have friends here in Vegas now coming here a number of times, you know, my friend Nick from Law of Attraction and all that other, mm. and, and things like that, I come here and I have a much different experience. I mean, we, we can't even see traffic where we're at. I no, mean, it's just, it's so right. soothing Apart and nice. Apart from the planes that were flying. Yeah, if you can hear, there's lots of, <laughs> it's Sunday, so there's lots of traffic here today. Yeah, yes. but we're staying a little bit longer. Yes.
Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. Really it was a delight. Thank you. Much love. Thank and you. if you haven't read this book yet, you must read it. The Law of Attraction by Michael Lozier. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Much love, my juicy co-creators. See you later. Big, huge, beautiful, juicy things in our lives. We have the power to do that, don't we? Much love. Awesome. Yay. Yay. <laughs>